Good morning. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Come on in for morning prayer. It is my privilege and honor to be with you all this morning for morning prayer. What an amazing time. What a, what a wonderful day to be alive. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and it adds no sorrow. Come on in this morning. Be blessed this morning. I'm Pastor John Hawkins with my wife, Nidra Hawkins. We are the Living Water Church and we are excited to have you this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise. We thank you. All right, let me see who's with us this morning. Let me see who's with us this morning. One second. All right, on Facebook. Um, okay, good morning, Steph. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, Nia. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Nia's with us this morning. Hello, Shinona. Look at all of these faithful soldiers out there this morning. You did. I didn't have to remind anybody. But everybody is tuned in, ready to go for 5 a.m. Prayer Nation. This is powerful. This is awesome. You can't do nothing big without praying. Good morning, Michelle. So glad to see you. We're so glad to meet your brother on Sunday morning. Uh, welcome, Pops. Welcome, Mother. All the intercessors are joining this morning. All of the prayer power team are connected this morning. I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm glad to be here. Thank God for the grace. Thank God for the grace to be consistent because um, the power, it's, it's in consistency lies the power. It's in consistency lies the power. And good morning, good morning, Lamika. Good morning, Miss Karen. My brother said he rocks with you, sir. Oh, that's my young homie right there. I rock with him too. I rock with him too. So I'm gonna be praying for him and uh, just be in agreement with me as we pray for him together to see God's purpose and plan fulfilled in his life, in Jesus' name. That's what this life is all about, guys. This this life, I'm telling you, I know, I know a lot of times. I mean, really, that's one of the one of Satan's biggest powers. You know, everybody think, you know, just see him as gross and all those kind of things. But one of his biggest powers is distracting people. This world is bombarded with distractions. I mean, think about it. If you, if you just went to heaven and peeked in on the earth, you will see everybody distracted. Everybody laced with distractions. But just imagine for one day, if you removed all distractions, what would your life be like Number one, you will be pursuing God like never before because that is the meaning of life. The meaning of life is to know God. So your number one priority 
would be, I must know God. I have to know him. I, I want to know him. You would be walking with him like Enoch. You will be walking with him like Enoch because nothing else would matter. Nothing would be here to distract you, to, to take your attention off of him. That's the meaning of life. The meaning of life is to know God, is to know Jesus Christ, the one he sent. People are going to college campuses, spending thousands and thousands of dollars trying to discover the meaning of life. People are going to school. People are spending so much money trying to answer this question. What is the meaning of life? And the meaning of life is to know the creator. That's your purpose. That's what you were put on this earth for. It's, it's the nature of a loving God. A loving God created you out of love to know him and so what does the enemy do he distracts he deceives he deflects he gets you focusing on on sickness in your body he gets you focusing on the condemning yourself spiritually when the reality is christ has already been condemned for us but he gets you focusing on condemnation he gets you focused on an ache, a pain, your age. He gets you distracted on all these things. He gets you distracted on the lack of education or somebody who has education and all they can focus on that they're more educated than other people. He, he gets you focusing on, I'm not married. I wish I had a better marriage. My children. I wish I had better children. He gets you distracted on money. I don't have enough. And it goes on and on and on. And if you, you know, you, you, you focus distracted on other people's money. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Why you think when people go to prison, they often draw closer to God? Not because they don't have any distractions. It's because they have less distractions. They have less distractions. So distractions is a plan of the enemy. Actually, the Bible actually talks about a double-minded man. It's actually a double-spirited man. Distracted. Two purpose. Two callings. Two destinations. Distracted. Yeah. Dual. Dual. So when, if you, by the grace of God, narrow it down, when a person have their priority straight, Number one, God becomes their priority because and it won't it won't you won't feel it won't be out of obligation. It, it'll be out of truth. It'll be out of purpose. And number two, your mission would be to reach people. Your mission would be to reach people. So those are the two main things. And what do you notice in life? People don't have enough time to, to seek God. And number two, people don't like people. Did you hear that? People don't have time to seek God and people don't like people. That's, that's where we at. But it's changing with you. I, I, I need somebody to say it's changing with me. I'm just saying. Because when you're on fire for God, the love in you is strong. Somebody talk to me out there. Okay, all my people on YouTube. Good morning, Freddie Moses. Good morning, Michelle. Michelle Ford. 
All my YouTube family out there. Good morning, Miss Mary. Chop. And good morning, Pops. People are connecting. People are connecting on YouTube. Kyrie, good morning. Erica and Miss Olivia. Good morning, good morning on YouTube. Guys, you see how we climbing on YouTube? I thought it was gonna take us about another couple months to reach a thousand. Man, we all we already getting closer to a thousand by the day. We already had 716 subscribers. <laughs> this is crazy. Wow, thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. Thank you, sir. Come on, they talking now. It's changing with me. Amen. Come on. That's right. That's right, Miss Olivia. That's right, Adrian. It's changing with me. That's right, Patria. It's changing with me. That's right, Miss Lorraine. It's changing with me. <clears throat> That's right, Miss Renee. Come on. That's right, I care. There we go, I, there we go, Nia. Come on. Come on, Danny. Come on, Marshall. Come on, Chop. That's right, Shinona. That's right, Mother. Come on, hallelujah. That's right, Miss Michelle. It changed with us. So, this is going to be the proof. Because we all know what Jesus says. You talk a big game with your mouth, but I'll never see it in your actions. You talk a big game with your mouth, but I'll never see it in your actions. You know what Jesus said, right? You talk a big game with your mouth, but I'll never see it in your actions. That's what Jesus said. He said, unless your lifestyle surpasses the lifestyle of the Pharisees, you ain't no different. So I'm going to give you the two keys of how you won't just be a person running good game on here texting. How you won't be a person that just talk good. How you going to be a person where your lifestyle is going to do better than the Pharisees. I got two for you. Let's make it practical. Practically, how can I know that my lifestyle is better than the Pharisees? And number two, how can I ensure that I'm not just chatting or chatting on the text stronger than what I'm living? Okay. Two things. Number one, you have a place where you meet with God daily. Same time, same location, daily. Without a place to meet with God, you won't be able to operate in enough God on a daily basis. Because what God expects from you, you can't do it without him. What God expects from you, you can't do it. Show me one man or one woman in the Bible that did it without God. What's about to happen in your life in this season, you gonna do it with God. You gonna have to do it with God. What's going to happen, I'm telling you, Somebody going to grow up. You're not going to stay that same little girl no more. You're not going to stay that same little boy no more. You're not going to keep going around in a circle in that same rut. Over It ain't happening. No. In these next 30 days, it ain't happening. You ain't letting it happen. You not keep on repeating the same thing over and over, trying to look for answers 
and the answers is right there in front of you. It's in a relationship with God. You not going these next 30 days, getting up every day, not talking to your father, not reading your Bible. I don't care if you don't like reading. You're going to start and you're going to start today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're not going to let you just fail because you want to play Mr. Clueless. You're not clueless. You know where to find God. God is in you and God is in that Bible. And you're going to humble yourself and you're going to search for him in them scriptures and you're going to find him. And he's going to talk to you and he's going to lead you and he's going to guide you. He's going to strengthen you and he's going to help you because you cannot do what God wants you to do without him. God got a God kind of blessing for you. And anytime there's a God kind of blessing, you need a daily God kind of encouragement. You need a daily God kind of word. You need a daily God kind of revelation. You need a daily God kind of comfort. You need some, you need some daily God insight. Because God got something he's trying to say to you constantly. He wants to say something. He wants to tell you don't be discouraged. He wants to tell you don't get caught up in no lies. He wants to tell you don't hold no grudges against anybody. He wants to tell you to worship him in spirit and in the truth. He wants to tell you to reach the world with the gospel. He wants to tell you something on a daily basis. Well, I wish I, I, I need y'all start sharing. Come on, y'all. Go ahead, start sharing. Come on, I, I need my soldiers this morning. Start sharing. Get the word out. Come on. We're about reaching the world. We're not on here playing no games. We're about building a God a house. We're about reaching the world with the gospel of the kingdom. Come on. This, 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 this region about the shape with the power of God. Come on, that's number one. If you not going to be like, see, the Pharisees were the type of people who will always say they can do X, Y, and Z, but you will never catch them genuinely seeking God. And if they were seeking God, they wasn't really seeking God. They were just doing it to impress other people. They were only coming to the prayer meeting long enough on all night prayer just to, just to show other people they showed up. <laughs> So if you wanna, if you gonna go higher, come on, thank those who share, thank those who share, come on. Even on YouTube, those on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe, go ahead and like, and please share. Come on, we need your help to reach the world. By you staying on here through this whole service from from five to six, you help our algorithm. You help our algorithm. Come on. I'm, I'm, I'm here to help somebody. I'm, let me let me let me get this word one more time. Cause cause some of y'all, you you be you be praying like you really want to know the answer. Well, here it is. In this season of your life, God has a God-sized blessing for you. Hmm. Glory to God. But the only way you're gonna get God size is that. You have to have God in this season of your life. You got to discover him on the inside of you. How, how do you discover God on the inside of you? Well, you discover him on the inside of you by discovering him in that word. See, the more you understand the word, the more you understand who's in you. The more you understand the word of God, because the Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So when you understand the word, you're literally getting to understand the God that's in you. God would never God wouldn't give you his word without revealing himself. So to know the word, you're beginning to discover the God that's in you. And as you discover God who's living and dwelling in you, you, you begin to learn how to be sensitive to him. Then he can lead you. He can guide you. God wants to guide you. Come on. God don't want you to be guided by, by Jay-Z's lyrics. Do you know how many you Christians are guided by the lyrics of some R&B singer and 
you're guided by some lyrics of some rapper and it just plays in your mind? Have you ever heard a song and it got in your mind and it just played over and over? Anybody ever experienced that before? Have you ever found yourself at some point in your life quoting the lyrics of a song and you was using it for guidance? That's not God. Uh uh-uh. uh. No. No. That's immaturity. Don't ignore me now. That's childhood. That's babyhood. Men, men, Christians, real mature Christians, don't allow rappers' lyrics to guide them, R&B singers to guide them. You can only love her for a season. I mean, I, I don't know what they're singing, but I'm pretty sure they got something like that somewhere out there. Come on, they talking to me. That's it, sir. When I get in my word, God is being revealed. That's right. You know how many brothers out here using rap lyrics and R&B? You know how many of your little nieces? I, uh, these little female nieces out here. Many of you got little cousin, little female cousins that are literally using R&B songs that some of y'all grew up on Rihanna and in her words were more powerful to you than the Bible. So in the same way that you govern your life by the words of singers and rappers and entertainers and and movies, you must begin to govern your life by the word of God. The word of God will reveal the God that's in you. The Bible says he'll lead you and guide you into all truth. So if your lifestyle is going to go higher than the Pharisees, guys, it cannot just be in what you say out your mouth. It has to be deeds. There needs to be deeds that back it up. And one of the biggest deeds that you must begin to do, practically, you need a place. So if I ask you, what time do you meet with God? At what point in the day? Is your time morning? Is your time night? You say, well, my time morning and night, sometimes, nah, no, we're not talking about that. You missed it. You missed it. You're not hearing me. I need I need to talk to the humble this morning. The prideful ain't gonna hear me. They're gonna do whatever they wanna do, and they're gonna keep repeating the same. I'm telling you guys, we're living in a God-sized time right now. And I need people who can grab a hold of this thing. I need people who are ready to die to themselves, die to their attitudes. I'm talking about desperate life. Father, I see what you up to in my life. Father, I see what you up to in, in, in our church. Father, I see how you're moving. I see I see what you're doing, Father. And I, I got to receive. I got to be a part of it. I can't look. Well, if you're going to have that kind of mindset, then you're willing to lay it all down. You willing to lay it all. You not go. Come on, man. You not living with that expired attitude. That thing is expired. Come on, man. You've been dealing with that for. Come on. You say, well, Pastor, I know, but how? You've been running from God for too long. You say, no, I go to church. I ain't talking about going to church. What is the use of going to church if you ain't in there with God? You go to church all you want to, but if you ain't in there with God, you ain't in church. How you going to be in church and you in church for years and you still don't sing to God and worship him and lift your hands and dance before the Lord? They ain't got no freedom in your spirit. <laughs> the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is. <laughs> where is he? Glory. Come on. Y'all see how I was celebrating? I wasn't fronting for none of y'all. I was in that. Glory to God. I wasn't from. You see me on Sunday morning. You think I'm doing that for y'all? Child, please. You see me just jumping and spending and dancing. Glory to God. I'm doing that for my father. I'm free. Freedom in my spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's my faith in the Lord. That's my faith in the Lord. And so, you know, when you can't celebrate God, I'm not saying you got to do it like me. You got to do it like the Bible. There are expressions of freedom. There's a lifting of the hand. The Bible tells all men to come together and lift up your hands without any wrath. Come on. So 
that's number one. Where's your place? Are you consistent? What's your time? You need to have a place and a time. And you don't you, you don't need to be changing that time. Is it in the morning or is it at night? And what time do you start every day? What is your time? It, it needs to be a specific time. Until then, you're going to keep wrestling with the same old attitude. You're going to keep repeating the same old stuff because you don't have enough God operating in you. The Bible says it's according to the power at work in you. You say, well, I thought I had God. Yes, you do. But he's only at work on a small scale in your life. So he can only but do but so much. The more you give room to God, the more God can change your life. So just imagine you start humbling yourself. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, how God, and pray. So if you just start humbling yourself starting today, and you say, okay, this is my time. This is my time of the day. At night, okay, this is my time. Or in the morning, whatever, whatever time works for you. Every one of y'all, why would you go another month without listening to what I'm teaching you? Why would you call me your pastor if you won't listen to me? What's the purpose of that? Are we, it's a tea party with no tea in the cup? Is that what we're doing? Yes, there's expressions of freedom. The lifting of the hands. That, that's a sign, an international sign of I surrender. There's, there's, Acts of joy. Ha ha ha. Glory to God. So I'm talking to all of you. I'm talking to the mature ones, immature ones, in between maturity. Used to be mature, fell off a little bit. I'm talking to everybody. Do you have a place? If you go back and look at the life of Abraham, he had a place. It's very specific that Abraham had a place. He would meet with God in a place. If you go to Noah, Noah had a place. Jesus had a place that he would go meet with his father. What is your place? The Bible even said concerning Jesus, he would get up early in the morning, way before daybreak. That was very specific. He had a specific time that he met with his father. And consistency, that's right there, lies the power. What is your time? I want everybody to text me their time on here this morning. And text me whether it's morning or day. If you already know. Huh? Huh? Text me your time. If, if you feel comfortable with that. I'm just trying to hold you accountable. That's all. If you don't feel comfortable, it's okay. You don't have to. All these beautiful people are joining us on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you guys. We didn't even send y'all no notice or nothing. And all y'all just, just on here. Welcome, Miss Michelle. Good to see you, Miss Michelle Lindsay. Looking forward to celebrating with you all this Sunday for uh, Easter. We're going to have an awesome time this Sunday. Welcome, 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 Joanna. Good to see you all. Good to see you all. Welcome, everybody. We're on our way. We're racing to see 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Okay, Miss Mary said from 9 to 10 a.m. That's awesome. Lamika say 3 a.m. Erica McMillan say 4 a.m. Joanna say 2 p.m. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, they send it, they send it in there. Let me, this is on YouTube. This is my YouTube prayer nation. Let me see what's going on on Facebook. Welcome, Nate. Good to see you, Nate, my soldier. Holding it down out there in, I believe we're in Richmond. Holding it down in Richmond. Um, Adrian, 3 a.m. Okay. Okay. And even if you didn't have one, uh, Miss Michelle Harris, 10 p.m. Chalk, 6 a.m. Shinona, 4 a.m. Okay, I'm seeing it. Uh, Mother and Pop, 6 a.m. Uh, Kitty Moe. 
night. I need a time though, Kitty Mo. You gotta give me a specific time. I'm teaching y'all. 3 a.m. I, I need a time, my kid. I need a time. That ain't good enough. Listen to me ain't good enough. I'm not him. I'm not him. Listen to me ain't gonna be good enough. You ain't gonna be able to make it just by listening to me. I ain't gonna even lie to you. I'm from the hood. I'm not I'm not no fake preacher. I'm not gonna sit here and trick you and bait you. No, I'm not enough. You gotta know Jesus for yourself. Every person gotta know Jesus for themselves. I have a role to play and I have a very important role, but I'm not the role. Jesus Christ is the role. And every one of y'all, if you're going to make it in this life and you're going to make it into heaven, you need to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ outside of me and outside of these teachings. Jesus Christ is Lord. Okay, Caddy Ma. Okay, they working with me now. 10 p okay, 10 p.m. before bedtime. That's good. Now make that your time. That's my time too. Now make that your time every single night, Kitty Mo. Make that your time every single night. You don't want to be fluctuating, mixing it with night, morning, morning, night. Stay consistent. Danny said 3 a.m. Okay, that's good. That's honest, Marshall. I appreciate that. Just let me know when you do, okay? Because I need your prayers. Pastor Nisha needs your prayers. And your brother, we all need your prayers. So it's important to have that time because as long as you got that time, you're going to be praying for yourself and others. So I appreciate your honesty. Thank you so much. And if there's anybody else that want to let us know, okay, we will be on YouTube. Uh, okay, I got you, Erica. Uh, who is this? Um, Miss. Okay, I got you, Miss Mary. Um, Kyrie, morning ain't good enough. You got to be okay. You said five thirty. So I'm assuming 530 when you're not on here with us. Okay. Uh, Miss Olivia, three and five. What does that mean? Are you doing twice? Twice every morning? Huh? Pastor Nidra is six. So right when we get off, she does hers. Erica, amen. Have no, know him for yourself. You are helping us to grow in the knowledge and how to get a relationship with him. Absolutely. And, and let me tell you, that doesn't diminish my role in your life. You know, some people can be prideful and go around talking about, yeah, well, we don't have to have pastor. Da, 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 da. We got to have God. Even pastor said that. You's a goofy. You's a goofy. You know, you just try. You just want to be disrespectful. When you know Jesus, you're going to honor and respect your pastor even more than what you do now. So that's what I'm saying. When you know Jesus, I don't have to worry about that. You will be some of the most loyal and dedicated people when you know Jesus, when you rooted in Christ. So I'm not talking to goofy people. I'm not talking about people who just want to express more rebellion, more defiance. People like that, just they just going to be like that. You know, they just going to be like that because they don't know the Bible. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah, come on. But anybody who loves God, your heart is soft. You're respectful to your pastors, to other Christians. What are we talking about? You ain't, you ain't, you ain't, when you know Jesus, you ain't that, you ain't stupid. You ain't trying to die before your time. I'm just telling you, you, you ain't, you ain't trying to die before your time. I mean, everybody, every, any Christian that's humble know you can't be playing around with men of God or women of God or even the body of Christ. Like I'm a pastor and I know not to be playing around with church folks. I don't play around with church folks. Y'all don't see me playing around like on no dishonoring according to the word of God. I love every one of you. Why do I love y'all? Because I fear God. You don't see me mishandling y'all. Y'all don't see me overstepping my boundaries and controlling y'all. None of that. No, because I fear God. And you should fear him the same way. And when you fear him, you'll have respect for the things that he respects. Absolutely. So that's number one. Um, yeah, that's number one. That's number one, guys. Okay, let me give you number two. Let me give you number two. Here you go. You ready for this one? Let me give you number two. I'm telling you. 
you go to work for God. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. Look at my wife and look at y'all. Look at how they going after the harvest. They plan and put a plan together and they brought over nearly 50, between 50 kids and 50 adults last Sunday. This Sunday just passed. All, you see them kids waving their hand in worship? Go back and look at it. I got the video, so I, I mean, almost 50 kids that my wife and Chalk brought. You got to get serious. Who are you reaching? You say, well, Pastor, I, I don't, I'm not caught, you know, I'm not on the kids' team. You got friends, you got family members. It's time to get people in the house of God, I'm telling you. It's time for you to step in your calling. It's time for many of you to represent the kingdom of God and represent the Living Water Church and get out there and go start reaching these shelters, go start reaching these high schools. These No, I'm talking to you. See, everybody want me to be talking to who you want me to be talking to. I'm talking to every face that's on. I'm talking to you. It's time for you to go get them young girls out there. Them young girls that was been taken advantage of like you were. How many girls that got is getting raped out there right now? Same age as you were when you went through something like that. And you're going to just sit in the house. You're going to just go to work. And you're going to act like you don't know what's going on out there. Like you forgot what's going on in all these high schools and these middle schools and these elementary schools. And you're going to just lay back and not do nothing about it? I'm telling you to get up. I'm telling you, you are called. I'm telling you, you got an anointing. I'm telling you, it's time for you to go start talking to these principals and go down there and start reaching these young girls. That's what I'm telling you. I'm talking to every person. I'm telling some of you saints on here that it's time for you to start getting together and go to these, go to the hospital. It's time for you to go start. Listen, to, no, I'm you saints, all you saints on here. All these hospitals with these precious, you know how y'all saints love grandchildren. You know how y'all love grandchildren. Y'all know how y'all love cheeks. There are babies out there that's dying, sick in the hospital right now. They sit, they dying. Their parents are sitting there with them on the bedside, don't know what to do. And you carry all that power. Get out them houses and go to these hospitals. I'm giving you the authorization. Go start reaching these parents. Go start giving them Jesus. Go raise these babies off them sick beds. Stop just talking about the power of Jesus and go demonstrate that power. Go pray for a thousand babies until one of them get up out that sick bed. And when they rise up, you bring them, you bring the whole family to church and you declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm telling you. And if you think that you're going to stay poor doing what I'm teaching you right now, you, you, the devil is deceiving you. If you think you're going to stay sick by practice, what, I'm not a sick person. I'm not a sick person. I don't live in sickness. I don't operate in sickness. I walk in health, healing, wholeness all the days of my life. I barely age. Everything is beautiful. I'm giving somebody. I'm, I'm giving. I'm giving it to you this morning. Am I communicating on that, Pastor? Yeah, Somebody on here. I'm telling you, God is telling you to wake up. You've been sleeping. You've been. You've been thinking that the responsibility is only on certain people that we have hired or that we've named in church. And I'm telling you today, the responsibility is on you. It's time to wake your legs up. It's time to go to these schools, talk to these young girls before they end up committing suicide. Don't you know you're going to be accountable for what I'm telling you right now? You say, but pastor, I don't feel like I'm qualified. But, but what do you think that little girl feel like who's about to kill herself? Do you think she cares whether or not you have a certificate? Do you think she gives a, a rat's tail that you know every verse in the Bible? She don't care. She don't care. 
All she cares about is, is she going to make it to see another? Can she hold on until you come talk to her? Get out there. Time to leave your houses. Get out. Get out the house. Become a mentor. Use the concept of a mentor to, to get into these places. Start a program. I'm telling you, wait, listen to me. It's time. You don't miss what I'm saying, church. Lord, what else could I say, Lord? You are the answer. That grandma who was praying, you all God got. I know you think he got all these important people. Where are they then? The important people, they busy. They distracted. That's why he calls us. You say, well, Pastor, you. No, I'm you. When, it, when This is 20 years in the making. But when he found me, I was like, you I'm you I'm just you in the future But you Can't become what I am Unless you start today What school you gonna go to I'm talking to you I'm talking to you I'm talking to everybody on you What school you gonna go to What hospital are you starting to go to this week What recreation center are you going to Come on, we're, we're all the men That love kids and love the youth What recreation center are you going to start going to what, what recreation center are you going to adopt To go in there Establish a relationship With the rec leader Say I want to come do something for the kids And you bring toys Or you bring pizza And you preach the gospel and then you connect them all with Chalk and say, Chalk, I got about 20 kids that want to come to school. Can you let Pastor know we're going to need another van? Why you ain't doing that? What about us, somebody going to school, connecting with the principal? I want to just come share my testimony. Maybe there's some little young girl in there that went through what you're going through right now, what you went through, what God brought you out of. But you can save them from going through some of the other stuff you went through. Any of y'all qualified. Every person on here qualified. All you need to do to be qualified is to accept Jesus Christ and get baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. You qualified. You are qualified. Guys, I'm telling you, it's harvest time. You need to listen to me. It's harvest time right now. You got to seize the opportunity in the moment of the opportunity. It's harvest time. What you going to do? What part you going to play? I'm doing, we, my wife and I, we doing some, some different type. I mean, we flying to Mexico by faith, believing God to do a big crusade in Mexico, which we're going to pray about today. What are you doing? It's time for you to do something. It's time for you to stop looking at who you used to be in the past and embrace who God called you to be when you said, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. What school are you planning on going to this week? I ain't talking about next week. What, what are you setting up for this week? The harvest is now. Say not four months into the harvest. He said, but the harvest is ripe and it is plentiful. All them schools in Anne Arundel County, all these schools in D.C., you got elementary, middle schools, high schools, colleges, they waiting for you. Pick one, pick two, pick three. Don't just be sitting around the house. Like, oh, I want a house. I need somewhere to live. Oh, I want money. Oh, I need a car. Get busy for God and cars will find you. You ain't never heard about me going around looking for no car. I ain't had to go car shopping in what? What, 10, 15 years or something like that? It's been about 15 years or so since my wife and I had to go car shopping. Cars get shopped to us. 
You know why? Because we busy serving y'all. How are we getting all these cars, Range Rover, Chryslers, Benz trucks, what people dream about, they get dropped off to us. I mean, guess, imagine what else is about to come to us right now. I mean, can you imagine the next car that somebody about to bring to us? You never know. I may show up to y'all with, with BMW keys, with Range Rover keys, just because some... I'm telling you, you you want all this stuff. He said, first seek the kingdom. I'm telling you, any of y'all only stop playing. You qualify. You qualify. It's time for you to get into school, get in the rec get in the hospitals, wherever there's people, wherever the doors is open, go. Go and go now. But Pastor, my makeup ain't gonna put your makeup on then. Pastor, I ain't got no clothes. Go wash your t-shirts. Well, I don't got no wash machine dry. Go around there, get a couple quarters. And get going. This will be a plan. Children's Hospital. It's time to get in there. It's time to get in there. I'm telling you, my wife and I was in the hospital. Remember that? These kids was out there like little five-year-old babies shaking like they possess. Parents lost hope. Don't even know what to do. No answers. You hear what I just said, guys? Did you hear what I just said? Hospital full. Everybody on every floor. Parents, no hope. And all it takes is one of y'all, all of y'all, to go in these places. Get permission. And even before, even while you're waiting for permission, I need y'all to start going into the emergency rooms. And just let them know, hey, I'm just coming in here, offer comfort to the people that's waiting to be seen. You know how many people in emergency room with a lot of pain in their body? A lot of pain. And you go in there and you and you pray for them and bring them comfort? Nah, no, listen to me. And all you got to do is say, Father, in the name of Jesus. But I told you, I already told you, the main thing, people distracted. They preoccupied with their life. Jesus can't get no, no benefit from them. But I do believe that there are people on here. And this is the way I'm directing my staff. All my staff will have to produce major fruit right now. Major fruit right now. Everybody got to go out to the harvest right now. We need to be in them schools. We need to be in them hospitals. We need to be in emergency rooms. We need to be at the recreation centers. I don't care. We need to be in daycares. Wherever there's a door, we need to be there. Wherever there's a door, we need to be. We need to be in the malls. I am going out to Silver Spring Mall and Cadoza High School. Who wants to go with me? That's right. We need to be everywhere. And you need to be trying to load up a bus full of, of a van full of, a 16, 15 passenger van full of people. And you should be, I'm just telling you like how they did it with Dr. Cho. I'm not saying I'm not willing to do it. I'm just letting you know with Dr. Cho Church, people would be so serious in this church about it. They would actually rent the van themselves on Sunday morning. Matter of fact, I'm not even, I'm, just, I'm, starting, I'm talking about a van. They would actually rent 55 passenger coach buses. But that makes sense. I mean, if you bless, God is blessing you. Come on, guys. If you bless, if you, if you blessed by God and you hungry for God, you serious about God, you got a relationship with God, you meeting with God in a place, you think you ain't gonna have a heart to go reach people, you think you ain't gonna have a heart to pay for vans. I'm not saying, I'm just telling you, you think and, and God has been blessing you, you think you that ain't gonna naturally be in your heart. That's just like somebody. God been blessing you and you got a car and you and you telling people about Jesus and people want to come to church but they don't have a way to get there. What you going to do? You going to put them in your car. So in the same way, you bless you going to be like, "Man, I'm going to go buy a van for $150, $180 this Sunday. I'm I'm packing all y'all up in the van. I'm bringing y'all to church." 
You cannot tell me that's not a natural response for somebody in love with God. If when you're in love with God, you're going to be in love with people, guys. Wake up. Get up. It's time to start running. I'm telling you, you need to know what season you You don't even know how close Jesus is. Files, we know he could be coming back tomorrow. I don't know. I have not no clue what day he's coming. I know what I feel in my heart. I know we're in a special moment right now. I know God is, he, he's brought us to a place to reach the world without us being, having big names or anything like that. Guys, we living in a very unique, interesting time right now where great people, I mean, look at what's happening with P. Diddy. I mean, my God, you can't even be on social media without coming across that. This is crazy. Who would ever thought that this man would be getting raided? His kids, everybody getting locked up. Who would have ever thought? For what? We only, we, I don't even know what the man really getting locked up for. I really don't. Come on. I work at Garnett Patterson Opportunity Academy High School Alternative School for Troubled Youth. I'm a behavior specialist. That's right. Open up that door for us so we can come in. Caddy. Let 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 Chalk and them come in there. Caddy. Let us come up in there. We need to come talk to the students. Set that up for us this week. Caddy, set that up for us. Chalk. Chalk is out over our youth ministry, everything. Set that up for my team to come up in there. And set that thing on fire. Guys, we're in, a, we're, in a, we're, in a, we're in a unique time. Why is this man being raided like this? I'm not saying he ain't do nothing wrong, but I'm saying still, period. Period. We're in a unique time, I'm telling you. And as a church, we need to wake up. Why is P. Diddy, they running up in this man's house, locking his sons up, locking his kids up. They throwing up, they all got him on the lawn. It's like, it's like high-tech military people. These are military people running. What in the world are we looking at? This is Diddy. Holla. What? What? The whole military though? What in the world are we living in? What's going on? They like they, they just built a billion dollar mall in New York and they already starting to shut it down. Because people are robbing everything in New York. They shutting subways down. I mean, I mean military all throughout the subways. With big old guns. We're not used to that in America. Now, when we go to these foreign countries, we used to that. In San Francisco, they say San Francisco looked like World War III done hit. It's like a ghost town. In San Francisco, they, they legally are allowed to go and rob stores without any consequences. Right now in San Francisco. They say some of the biggest thieves are in London right now, in the most richest places in London. They carry big, long knives. And they robbing all the rich people Rolexes in London right now. Guys, you need you got to wake up to what's going on out here. And the best thing you can do, number one, is have a place where you meet with God. And number two, you got to find you got to go after the harvest. OK, now what, what role are you going to play? What you going to do? What, who you going after? Where you going to start? Are you going after the homeless? Are you going to start this week going out on the corners to the homeless, bringing sandwiches? And bringing them to church Are you going to start with the shelters Are you going to find shelters And start going to shelters this week And loving on them and bringing them to church Are you the one going to the hospitals Good morning Good morning Where you going You right, Miss Michelle Nelson. You hit that right on the head. She said the jet is next. You right. That's it. That's what's next. That's what we're receiving right now. That's what's about to be turned over to us. The jet. You right. I know I was feeling something. That's what it is. That jet is being turned over to us right now. My wife agreed too. So that's what y'all gonna be saying. You're gonna be seeing us. Doing videos, you know, my, my camera guy, Delano Hall, is going to be recording videos of us 
in our new jet. And we're going to show y'all, and then we're going to bring y'all to come uh, do a, um, a housewarming, a jet warming. Yeah, we're gonna bring y'all to do a jet one. We're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna have sparkling water. We not we don't do no alcohol. And we're gonna pop some sparkling water. And we're gonna have hors d'oeuvres and all that kind of stuff. And you're gonna be in your nice, your best outfits. You're gonna be clean, nobody dirty, nobody dry weaves or none of that. Everybody gonna be fresh and immaculate, and we're gonna have a jet woman. And we'll be able to go and sit in it. Eat stuff, have a nice little party around it, and all that. We're gonna do that. That's coming up right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, this is it. These five o'clock in the morning prayers are powerful. Things are happening, things are changing. Look how beautiful of a school that we in right now. That place is beautiful. The location is beautiful. The feeling when you come up in there is beautiful. Everything is beautiful. Shoot, sure, we got about it's about 12 staff now. Yeah. It's about 12 of us. It's a lot of us. Everything is beautiful. That's right, apple cider. Apple cider. So get ready for that jet because while y'all going into the hospitals, while y'all going into the, I'm talking about, come on, Erica, where you, where you going, Erica? Come on, I need, I'm talking, I need all y'all. I need everybody. Come on, man, this is serious. And I need y'all doing this at least once a week. It's time. If you with me, I need y'all to be with me. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Jet warming. That's right, jet warming. I've got some of my dad's clothes and I'm about to sew. Make sure whatever you sew, though, is good clothes. It's good stuff. We don't sew no old, you know, things. Make sure whatever you sew is in, is in great condition. Now, if you want to just take it to home, you know, take it to homeless people on the street, that's one thing. But anything anybody bring to the church, and this anybody, it needs to be the best. We don't bring no hand-me-downs. And I'm not talking about your father, but I'm some, we don't bring no hand-me-downs to the church. When you bring shoes to the church, you bring new things. You bring your best. You bring your best. You don't bring bags of clothes. You bring your best. Yes, sir. I will be taking Shania and James with me to emergency rooms. Okay. It's a different feeling in that school. Come on. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we're going to go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. So take these things to heart and, uh, you know, find your way in it. But Father, we just pray over the crusade in Mexico. Father, we just pray your will be done. Can we pray his will be done? We pray your will be done concerning this crusade in Mexico, Father. We pray your will be done, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father. We pray that your will be done, my wife and I. We pray your will be done in the living water church concerning this crusade. We will reach the world with the gospel of the kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you lead us, that you guide us. We thank you that everything goes according to your will concerning this crusade. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we're going to pray over Sunday morning. Uh, we're going to pray... Um, that God's presence, his glory, his anointing, his fire, his utterance in the Holy Ghost will be evident that he will put words, his words in my wife and I's mouth and any person that touched the microphone. We pray that his presence will engulf us uh, this Sunday. Let's begin to pray. Father, we just thank you for this Sunday morning. We thank you for every service this week. Father, we ask that according to your word that you will pour out of your spirit upon all flesh. As you, as you spoken in your word, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that you will give every person that touched the microphone utterance in the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for utterance in the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that you will make our words, our mouths, as the pen of a ready writer. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for it, Lord. We thank you that every person that comes will be impacted by your spirit. Just like you touch people this Sunday, we pray that you will touch them every Sunday, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, amen. Now we're going to pray for supernatural, exponential church growth. I mean, church growth out the scenes. I mean, people busting out of that school like sardines, like where we just going to have to move like super fast, like, like exponential growth. Do y'all know we actually had 188 people in church this Sunday? Uh, and we didn't do no type of like nothing, no different than what we normally do. A hundred, that was almost 200 people was in it. Almost 200 people we had this Sunday. So let's pray. Let's pray for exponential growth. Hallelujah. And we pray that God will give you the courage to play your part. That God will give you the strength, the fire to play your part, to go out, to get out there, to start reaching people, to put a plan together, to put a strategy together. Father, I pray you give all your people boldness on here this morning, Lord, that once a week they will go out. They will go out and reach their world. We've been prophesying this. We've been prophesying this for years. I will reach my world. You will reach your world. And together, we will reach the world with the gospel of the kingdom. So, Father, I pray that every person will go out and reach their world, Father. I pray that you will give them boldness, Father. I pray you will give them strategy. I pray you will give them fire, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father. Oh, we thank you, Father. We thank you, we thank you, we give you praise. Oh, we thank you, we thank you, we give you praise, Father. Oh, we thank you, we thank you, we give you praise. We give you worship, we give you honor, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, that the church grows supernaturally, that the church is growing, Father. We pray, you said, if any two shall agree concerning anything. If you agree with me out there, guys, if anybody agree on YouTube, on Facebook, uh, just type, I agree. I agree. If you agree with me for us, exponential, supernatural church growth beyond our comprehension, just type, I agree. Father, you said if any two of us shall agree concerning anything, it shall be done by you which in heaven, Father. You said if you be lifted up, you would draw all men unto you, Father. We pray right now. We thank you right now. We pray right now. We thank you right now, Father, for supernatural growth. People will be drawn to the living word of church. They'll just begin to come from the woodworks. They'll find out. They'll hear in the name of Jesus Christ. They'll find out. They'll hear in the name of Jesus Christ. They'll begin to come from all over, Lord. Father, we pray that the church will hit 200, Lord. That the church will hit 200, Father. And then we pray the church will hit 300 and then 400 and then 500. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we pray for a mighty harvest this Sunday. A bunch of people will come out, Lord. And that we as a church will be ready for them, Lord. The, the children's church will be ready for them. Pastoral will be ready for them, Lord. Uh, uh, helps will be ready for them, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Bus ministry will be ready, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We all agree, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, 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 Father. Oh, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for a mighty harvest, Father. Now, we're going to begin to pray for all of you all, for the church, everybody that's watching, everybody that's tuned in all over the world. We pray that God will open up the eyes of your understanding, that you will be enlightened, that you will know the hope of his calling, that you will grow deep into the love of God. So we're going to begin to pray for you that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. We pray for all the Living Water Church family. We pray for all those that are tuned in all over the world. And we pray for your family, your loved ones, that God will open the eyes of our understanding. That God will open the eyes of your understanding. That you would be enlightened. That we would be enlightened. That we would know the hope of his calling in the name of Jesus Christ. That we would know the depth, the height, the width, the length of God's love. That we would know the inheritance of the saints in life. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father. We thank you for the Living Water Church. Thank you for this new school. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the school, Lord. Thank you for all of our staff, Father. 
Thank you, Father. Thank you for all these intercessors, Lord, all these mighty prayer warriors on Facebook, on YouTube, Lord. Thank you for all of them standing with us this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all of them being in agreement with us, Father. Thank you, Father, for all of the agreement. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Miss Michelle Ford is in agreement. Dominique is in agreement. Miss Mary Buchanan is in agreement. Miss Michelle Lindsay is in agreement. Lamika is in agreement. Erica is in agreement. All these are on YouTube. They are in agreement. Miss Olivia is in agreement. Kyrie, Deacon Kyrie is in agreement. They all are in agreement. And we agree. We agree. We agree. We agree. We're going to put out. We're going to put out. And I want y'all to sow towards that today. We're going to put out a lot of um, posters today. We're going to put out a lot of posters. So when we get y'all between to give today, I want y'all to sow towards that. Freddie Moses. Thank you, Freddie, man. I appreciate you, man. You're, you're a great blessing. Freddie Moses uh, is in agreement. So we're going to, Kyrie is going to be going out, putting out a lot of posters in the Severin area. In the Severin area. In the Severin area. In the Severin area. area. So today I want you to get an amount in your heart. Some of y'all can sow 200. Some of y'all can sow different amounts. But as the Lord put it on your heart, just go ahead and get, get that prepared in a little bit before we get your opportunity to give. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Don't forget, every Friday we have Chameleon Friday. Isn't that right, Pastor Lee? Every Friday we have Chameleon Friday. I love that. That's powerful. Chameleon Friday. Woo, glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for everybody, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for their lives. We thank you for their families, Lord. Their families, Lord. We pray you visit their families, Lord. We pray you visit our staff, Lord. We pray you bind the Living Water Church staff together, Lord. We pray for them that you strengthen them, Lord. Father, we pray for every pastor in the Living Water Church, Lord, that you will comfort us, that you will strengthen us, that you will continue to lead us and guide us. Father, we pray for the staff that you will strengthen them, Lord, that there's no backsliding in them, Lord, that they're rooted and grounded in the faith. Father, we pray for all those that are in KCGs, Lord, all the KCG, those who are signing up for KCG leaders. We pray, oh, we, oh let me not forget the department uh, leaders, all of my department leaders, Father. We pray for them, Lord, the department heads, Lord. We pray for all the KCG leaders in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for all those that are on helps. We pray for all the members of the Living Water Church, and we pray for all the visitors, Lord. And we pray for all those that are, that, that are in the surrounding areas of the church. We pray that you that you that you strengthen them, that you bind us all together in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, that you bind us all together. Father, we even pray for our reach, our reach on social media, Father. We pray that you will give us even greater impact on social media, Lord, that we will reach more people and more people and more people, Father. That you will help us, Lord, with the algorithm, that you will give us more strategy, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father. We give you praise. And Father, we pray for every person that's watching today that you would just bless their day, Father, that you would go ahead of them. Father, that you would send their angels ahead of them, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. I want all the people on, on YouTube, everybody that's on YouTube, go ahead and like, 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 like the channel for me, for me real quick. Everybody that's on Facebook, please just click the like button, just real quick. Just go ahead and click. Click that like button right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So I'm going to refresh it, and I just want to see all the people that's watching. Please do that for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're going to wrap up in a few minutes. We're going to wrap up about about 60 seconds. We're going to wrap up in about 60 seconds. Come on, this has been powerful. The glory of God is in your home, guys. The Living Water Church is about to grow supernaturally. There's about to be tons and tons of people. Uh, coming to Living Water Church, we're going to go after the harvest. Um, we're going to be doing global crusades, Mexico, Puerto Rico. Um, we're starting more churches, D.C. location, Mexico location, Puerto Rico location. Uh, we're going to be getting, we're going to be getting um, our land. We're going to be getting land and building property on our land. Glory to God. Yeah. And that's the way it's going to be. Just 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise, Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank everybody for liking. Thank everybody for liking. Thank you all. Uh, now we're going to put the giving links up for everybody to give. We're going to put the giving links up so everybody can give. We're going to put the giving links up on Facebook and on YouTube. So towards what's happening. You know, we have Easter coming up. We're going to be giving away gas cards. We're giving away candy. So sow a major seed. So towards, so towards us reaching, reaching souls this morning. Some people can sow 20, 50. So where you are. Some people can sow in the thousands. Sow according to how God has blessed you. We are doing a big outreach this Sunday. So we're going to be marketing. We're going to be marketing. So you're going to see some marketing take place. We got a new Living Water Church page. So go ahead and like the, our new Living Water Church page. Go ahead and pull that up and like that. We're going to be doing our marketing from there. Um, uh, Deacon Kyrie is going to go get posters today. So, yeah. So be a part of that. Be a part of that. Be a part of what's going on. Be a part of what's going on. Um, can we put the links up on YouTube, please? Let's put the links up on YouTube. All links on YouTube. Hallelujah. So we have all of our giving links going up. Uh, we have we have Cash App, which is the money sign the Living Water Church. Text to give. We have PayPal, we have Zelle, Venmo. All that is in the description. I mean, so you can give, excuse me. So we're going to pray with the offering. Give you the opportunity to give. Don't forget, um, we have discipleship class today at 10 a.m. Discipleship class at 10 a.m. Mom with the ladies with Pastor Nidra at 1 p.m. Yep. It's going down. So let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for all those that sowed into your work this morning. I pray your richest blessing upon them. Father, I pray that you will overtake them today, Father. In the name of Jesus. Send your angels of blessings, your angels of favor in their company this morning and this day. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Well, thank you guys for joining us for morning prayer. I'm John Hawkins with my wife Nidra Hawkins with the Living Water Church. This is Prayer Nation. We're happy that all of you all join us today. Remember, every morning, 5 a.m., I'll be right here to pray with you and with you to pray with us as we reach the world with the gospel of the kingdom. You know how we do it. I will reach the world with the gospel of the kingdom. Every morning, Tuesday through Friday, 5 a.m., also discipleship, 10 a.m., and then Pastor Nidra, 1 p.m. And then um, don't forget that this Sunday we have Easter. So it's going to be awesome. Friday. Chameleon, 
and bless it. Well, I love you guys. Pastor Adrian, now we love you. Until next time, reach the world. <laughs>